Google Ads has changed forever. Everyone who's running an e-commerce store in 2024 has realized that Google Ads is extremely lucrative in your display assets, in your search terms. We are going to break down exactly our strategy that we're using in 2024 across all of our clients. This client in particular drove 153,000 in sales in the last 30 days at a $38,000 spend. That means for every dollar that we are spending with this client, they are driving a 4X return. Spending $1, making $4 back. And I'm gonna break down the five exact things that we're doing for this client that have propelled them towards the end of 2023 and that we're using all of 2024. So the very first thing we're going to do is set up our partner integration. We're going to type in Google and YouTube into the Shopify app store, and we're going to click the first non ad results. And we are going to click install. In this case, as I mentioned, we are already doing this with a client. So we're going to pop right over to the sales channel. It will come up as a sales channel on the left hand side of Shopify. You can click Google and YouTube. Once you're in there, you'll probably land on a screen that looks like this, or we'll have some setup that you need to do. The setup is very, very basic. It's just connecting your Google ads account to your Shopify account, to your merchant center, really, really basic stuff that you're going to be able to do quickly. What matters the most, because I know a lot of you already have this app installed is actually going to your settings and making sure the number one thing is that conversion tracking is set up. It's going to set up these beautiful conversion actions automatically into your Google account without you having to do anything. So by some Shopify magic, we are basically going to have guaranteed perfect tracking in Shopify. In this case, the client was previously using Google Google Analytics to track their conversion, which was missing a ton of view through, engagement through, and even some click through. Since we fixed it up and polished it back, we have only seen two additional conversions come through the Google Shopping app purchase. However, in the context of 32 conversions versus 29.99 conversions, that is nearly a 7% increase, almost on track to $25,000 difference in value. Once you set it up, make sure that each section of your conversions only has one primary event. Moving on to the second step, we are integrating Flavio within the audiences section of every single ad account. The reason that this is so important is because we are now able to take our customer data that we own, email addresses, phone numbers, physical addresses, any other method, and we're able to push it into the Google ads platform to inform performance max. We're able to inform our search audiences. We can do all of this just by implementing our CRM into Google ads. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this using the Clavio integration. Now that we are in Clavio, what we're going to do is on the left-hand side, scroll down to your brand name, click integrations. Once you get there, you'll land on a screen that looks just like this. Click add integration, search for Google ads, click that integration. Once you land on the Google ads section, you are then going to be able to add your audiences. So these are your segments that you've created in Clavio. You are then going to be able to port them over to Google. We think about creating segments in Clavio, which we've done in our audiences list and segments, and then we rename the segment so we clearly identify it and it pushes automatically literally within one minute to Google ads. Basically what we're doing here is we have our add to cart 30 days. We have our add to cart 180 days. We have high value purchasers, meaning they've purchased more than once purchasers, 180 days, add to cart all time, purchase 30 days, purchase all time, site visitors, all time, super high value purchasers, meaning they've purchased five or more times, all email users, site visitors, seven days, site visitors, 180 site visitors, 30 days. There's actually no downside in having multiple audiences in Google ads because most of them will be used for observation methods only, meaning we're not actually bidding. We're not telling Google to do anything against these audiences unless there's a positive signal. No negative signal will actually hurt or change the way the Google algorithm is bidding. So these are purely observational unless we want to use the really, really high value ones to target specifically. Don't be afraid if you have 10, 20, even 30 different audiences in here, depending on the size of your business. What I will say is that each of these segments should have about a thousand people in them. If you're under that, if you're a smaller brand that's just starting out, just group together a few things, get it as close to a thousand as possible. If you can't get there, start small. And as they build, they'll become more and more relevant in Google. The final piece to this puzzle is bringing these over from Klaviyo to Google ads, and then actually leveraging them inside of Google ads. So I'm going to show you exactly how we do that in two different ways within the Google account that I was mentioning before. So the place we like to use these audiences are first in our performance max campaigns. So what we're going to do is head over to our primary performance max campaign, go to your asset groups and click signals here on the right hand side. There's going to be a little pen. You can click that within here. We are going to go down down to our audience signal and click the edit button one more time. Once this loads up, you're going to see this very first big section here is going to be called your data. Within this your data section, we are going to have the ability to add all of those Clavio customer lists that I mentioned last time. We are going to inform Google who's interacted with our business and who could potentially be a future customer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select everyone here who has made an action for us that has been more valuable than others. I really want to hit purchasers, purchasers all time, add to cart 180. So we're setting these up as four 
four customer list and we're gonna go down here and we're gonna click save, meaning anywhere else that it applies, we are going to have it push right here as well. At the bottom, you can click save and then we are going to go right over to our branded search campaign. On the left-hand side, we're gonna click audiences yet again. Once this loads up, we are gonna click this button that says add audience segments campaign and same thing again, we are gonna easily type in Clavio and you'll see if you scroll down just a little bit, you have all of our customer list. And just to keep this easy, you can just click this one button, how have they interacted with your business? And it's gonna show you all of your Clavio customer lists. We can go ahead and click save. It should take about 10 seconds. These are observation audiences. So you can see your targeting setting is observation. We don't want these to be targeted audiences. All we want Google to do is take a look at this audience. Is it working? Yes or no. And then later on, which is a bit more advanced, we can then optimize and adjust our bids based on how the audience is performing. That is the full step number two. We are hooking up DRM to Google. We are porting those audiences over to every single campaign that we have active. And we are porting specific audiences as observation, other audiences as targeted, some in Pmax that are high value, some across branded search, non-branded search, and really everywhere that we can. So the third thing you need to be doing to have success in Google Ads in 2024 is to set real goals. So let's hop over to a whiteboard. I'm going to show you how I'm setting true goals with our clients. The key here is that a lot of clients come to us and they say, yeah, we just need to hit a 3X ROAS and it's all good. And when I say, why do you need to hit that 3X ROAS? They say, oh, well, you know, that's always what we've done or that really like helps us get above our profitability number, but they don't really have that true answer as to exactly why that number comes into place. In this case in particular, I just want you to stick with me because this is the basis of how you can create what I call your break-even ROAS. This is your number. This is your core number that is actually going to allow you to spend as much money as you want, as long as you're hitting this number or above it or below it if it's cost per acquisition, you could spend as much money as you want in ads and scale literally to the moon at or under this number. What we call this is the break even ROAS slash CPA. There are two key metrics that we're gonna be looking at here to get our true goal. First is AOV. In this case, we are gonna assume is $100. The next variable that we are going to look at is cost of goods sold. We are going to assume the business operates at a 50% margin. That very simply means if we sell $100 worth of product, we make $50 worth of profit because those goods cost us 50%. In this case, we are gonna assume 50%, which equals $50 in profit when we are operating at a $100 average order value. What does this mean for our two primary metrics, which are going to be ROAS and CPA, or also known as cost per acquisition? If you're operating at a 50% margin, your ROAS to achieve break even, so this is key, break even, even ROAS here is very, very simply going to be how many times this $50 profit is divisible into this 100, which in this case is 2X because 50 goes into 100 twice. To get your break-even CPA, what you're going to do is again, really, really straightforward. You are going to multiply your average order value times your cost of goods sold as a percentage. So we're taking 100 times 50%, which is 100 times 0.5, and we get again, $50. Now these numbers are pretty, they're round, they work out because we're working at a 50% margin, but in your case, you should be operating at a very specific margin. If you're 21.3%, Plug it in here and understand your goal. These ROAS numbers will change drastically depending on your cost of goods. This is a very standard situation that we see. We see around 25 to 30% margin plus different fees and stuff going into whatever business we're running with. We try to hit around a 2X ROAS for specific clients or a $50 CPA. They usually line up hand in hand. How we are actually setting up these ad accounts, there are two things that every single person needs to do. So let's hop over to our Google Ads account, specifically that account that I was showing you before. And what's pretty funny here is just in the time that I'm recording this video, our overall return on ad spend has actually gone up just a tiny bit by a few thousand dollars. As I mentioned before, this is the strategy we're using to scale about $38,000 in spend over the course of 30 days to drive a 4X ROAS at $153,000 in revenue, spending a dollar, making $4 in return. Here is exactly what we're doing. The first things first is we are setting up a performance max campaign. This campaign is very straightforward. It is the standard performance max campaign that we're launching. All you need to do is set up your 
your core performance max campaign with your best selling products. If you only have three, four products, then all your products need to be in here. However, if you have two, three, 400 products, then break down a few listing groups. They can be broken down by price or collection. Once you set up this performance max campaign, I recommend setting the budget a little lofty and then guiding it with a target ROAS. So in this case, our target ROAS for this is 400%, which is exactly what we're hitting over the last 30 days. Set it up right at your goal and let it be for quite a while. Here is tip number five for 2024 performance max, Google ads and shopping ads. We are actually in addition to running smart shopping or performance max campaigns as they call them now, we are also running a standard shopping campaign. So you can see it right here. This we like to call it OG shopping because it's just old school at this point, not many people run it. In this case, what we have found is that even though the ROAS, so you can see the ROAS here is 3.16. First thought would be just pause this campaign and just run the big campaign, just run the Pmax. What we have found is when we run both of these campaigns together at the same time, we drive more revenue. Maybe it's a secret, maybe it's just gonna work Work for the next three, six, seven months. However, I would highly recommend you do it right now towards the end of 2023. And it is working really, really, really well. So it's a bit complex. It kind of is a head scratcher because it doesn't totally make sense. Your first gut would be pause the bad campaign, but it works in this case. And I'm telling you, give it a roll. I would be pretty confident that it's going to improve your Google ads performance overall. Those are the five best ways that we have seen Google ads scale towards the end of 2023. And it is the exact strategy that we're going to be using across all our accounts in 2024 and for the foreseeable future. The five steps I just broke down are just the core. Going deeper, optimizing deep dives, day of week analysis, literally everything that we do for every single one of our clients is very, very complex. You could probably gather a lot of that information from this channel based on everything that we are really relaying out. However, if you want it managed for you, if you are very interested, or if you just have questions on what I'm talking about, reach out in the comments or reach out directly. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next one.